Ich rede Schweizerdeutsch. I speak Swiss German now. Sie sagen, oh, die schwarze Person mit dem Schweizer Passport, was geht da los überhaupt? Und dann machen sie den Pass so auf und dann sagen sie, oh, was ist Ihr Name? Ostertag. Ich sage, ja, mein Name ist Ostertag, Belinda Ostertag. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you so much for joining me once again back onto my channel. If you're a new subscriber, welcome. And if you're an oldie, welcome back. If you've not already hit the subscribe button, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well as turn on your notification bell so you get a notification every time I upload. So today guys, as you read from the title of this video, I am doing a citizenship discussion you know sort of a q a as well as a bit of educational discussion and background in regards to how to obtain a swiss passport and become a swiss citizen to be honest with you i think what like i said i don't know if i mentioned this before but what inspired me to do this video was because i was on instagram the other day and i came across this um headline feed or whatever you want to call it and um, where a black african couple went to switzerland to go and give birth now I don't know whether they thought that the child being born in Switzerland automatically gives that child citizenship. However, that's not the case. It's not it's not like in America or in the UK where a child is born in that specific country and automatically gets citizenship. It doesn't work that way. Okay. So in this video, we're going to discuss about how to become a Swiss citizen. Um, whether there's any sort of exams that you have to write and all the information guys that I'm providing you with is the current 2021 information so if you are interested in this video guys keep on watching so first things first Switzerland does not fall part of the EEA or the EU so it's not one of the European countries as well as it does not fall part of the EEA which is also known as the European Economic Area so basically it does not fall part of the EU or the EEA rather Switzerland is classified as a single market country okay so it's a country on its own so don't know when they became a single market on its own but I do know that Switzerland on its own does not get involved in any sorts of war or those kind of things okay so they're just a neutral country on its own so next guys I'm gonna be discussing how to obtain your Swiss citizenship Basically, there are three ways in getting your Swiss citizenship. So I'm going to name them and then we'll discuss them. Okay. So the first way of getting your Swiss passport or rather your Swiss citizenship. I don't know why I keep saying passport, but rather let's discuss how to get your Swiss citizenship. So you can get your Swiss citizenship firstly by being a child of a Swiss national, either born or through adoption. One of the two. The second way of becoming a Swiss citizen is by marrying another Swiss citizen. So marrying a Swiss national um, gives you an opportunity to become a Swiss citizen rather. If you are going to be obtaining a Swiss passport through marriage, there are certain rules and regulations. So for instance, my partner does not necessarily mean he gets a Swiss passport because I'm Swiss. Because he has to be able to stay in Switzerland five years married prior to obviously obtaining a Swiss passport. I think even with the British citizenship it works like that. I'm not too sure. When du ever heuratest wo wo a Schweizer is, heisst nicht, dass du den Schweizer Pass kannst überholen. Du musst in der Schweiz für fünf Jahre mit dem Person bleiben und wohnen in der Schweiz zum Schweizer Passport überholen. So that heißt that just because you are married to a Swiss national does not entitle you to a Swiss passport. It doesn't work that way. And the third way, which has become more common, is through naturalization. So basically, you must have stayed rather 10 years in Switzerland prior to applying for citizenship. And you must in the Schweiz, I believe, 10 years before you get a Schweizer passport. So those are the three ways of becoming a Swiss national. So if you are not a child of a Swiss national or you are not married to a Swiss national and you migrate to Switzerland, you would have to have stayed there for 10 years. Um, prior to applying for Swiss citizenship. However, staying there for 10 years in order to apply for the naturalization process does not necessarily mean that you will obtain the Swiss national. Guys, you need to remember the laws change all the time. So just because you stayed in Switzerland for 10 years does not mean that you are obliged or legal to obtain a Swiss citizenship. Um, one of the rules in Switzerland, especially being a foreigner, prior to becoming 
a Swiss citizen through naturalization, there's a long list of requirements in order to become a Swiss national. So first things first, you have to be able to show that you are integrated into the country, okay? So you need to show that you know what the country is all about and also that you are able to fit into the country. Then you need to know the way, the laws, as well as the tradition of the country. In addition to that, you also have to show that you're not some sort of threat to the national security because Switzerland takes its security very serious. I think we all know, you know, even if you're not Swiss, I think you've heard that Switzerland's security is a very tight knit security and they take it very serious. It's not every Tom, Dick and Harry that they're going to let into the country. It's not every Tom, Dick and Harry that is going to be allowed to get some sort of nationality um, obviously if they not done a thorough background check on you as a person and lastly you have to be able to show that you can speak as well as write one of the common languages that is spoken in switzerland so that is how you become a source national now in regards to naturalization there's many laws and rules that you have to follow at this current point in time in order to become naturalized as a Swiss citizen so naturalization in another way it also depends on the area that you are staying in in switzerland so every area has its own rules and regulations it's not like you are staying in the uk all rules apply to everybody it doesn't work that way so for example if you're going to write the life in the uk test basically you guys all write the same questions isn't it some sort of similar however in switzerland you write the test according to the area it's called canton where you stay in as well as sometimes the municipality in the area that you stay in also comes and does a surprise visit to your home okay which is quite you know inviting of privacy but then again that is the legal requirement so in other words if you're going to apply for citizenship it is advised to stay in a very specific area for at least minimum of two years instead of moving around switzerland so you have to be registered with a municipality rather for a two-year period obviously in those 10 years so the most dying question everybody wants to know is how i obtained my swiss passport so i obtained my swiss passport through my father because my father is swiss and um, so automatically if i have children my children will be able to obtain their Swiss passport in material where they were born. They will be able to obtain the passport through me um, as a mother because I've got Swiss citizenship. So for those who don't know, um, obviously, my surname is Ostertag. Ostertag in Swiss German would be Easter Day. Okay. So the requirement for citizenship like i said is having some sort of knowledge of one of the four languages that are most common because switzerland has more than one language one of the four common languages in switzerland that you would have to have some sort of language of obviously not all of them but at least one of them firstly is german so you would have to be able to read and write in german um secondly it's italian you will have to read and write as well as speak read write speak in french and also read write and speak in romish so romish guys is not romanian no it's not it's another most um common language that is spoken in a certain part of switzerland i for instance don't speak any italian french as well as bern i speak swiss german now swiss german is a dialect of german so swiss german like i said is not really a language it's a language but it's not really a language if that makes any sense it's more of a dialect of german so you could say swiss german is a variation of different dialects Und dann, wie sagt's, wie sagt's wieder? Sie sagen, grüß Sie miteinander, hallo zusammen, wie geht's mit euch? Mir geht's gut, danke. Ich kann nicht Deutsch reden, ich rede Schweizerdeutsch. Und dann, viele Leute fragen sich selber, wie kann eine schwarze Person einen Schweizer Passport haben? Wie? Danke, wieso denn nicht? Was ist das Problem mit das? So, people get this German confused with either German, um, Afrikaans, which is a South African language, or Dutch. They normally get confused with those languages. But one thing that's interesting about the Swiss language is the fact that what is quite interesting about being Swiss or able to speak Swiss German is that as a Swiss German speaker, most people who are German, German speakers cannot necessarily understand what Swiss German people are speaking. Once again, like I said, it's not the same language, it's more of a dialect. However, Swiss people can understand what German people are saying. So it goes like this. Ich bin Schweizerin und ich kann Schweizerdeutsch reden. Aber wenn du nur mit Deutsch redest, verstehst du nicht, was ich sage als ein Schweizer. Okay, so between the two languages, between Swiss German and German, I believe German is more harder to learn 
thin Swiss German, which is quite interesting because seeing that most German people find it difficult to understand Swiss German. Okay, so I remember when I first came to the UK, um, just a quick crown check. When I first came to the UK, there's different lines basically. So there's for non-EUs, there's for EUs, and then there is for EEAs as well as Swiss nationals for the passport check, okay? And I remember at that point in time, I didn't know that, you know, Swiss national didn't fall under EU because I didn't have that knowledge. I was only 18 then. So I stood under the EU um, line. The EU line was long, okay, very long, because I remember there were obviously all sorts of European countries. And then obviously the security guard was checking our passport. And when he saw I had my source passport, he automatically took me from the EU line and I walked straight past the Swiss line, guys. There was no line, there was no line in the Swiss line, but there was no line at all. I people i don't really want to say switzerland is a racist country i just think that they are a bit um uneducated when it comes to people of color not everybody um but most of them and i think like one thing actually that i find very interesting which is actually quite shocking in switzerland people expect you to be slim you know and as a person of color there's no way i'm going to be built slim you know you've got curves in the right places you know then all but they're looking at you like they're looking at you like i don't know what they're looking at you like but they're looking at you somehow According to the current passport index, so if we go here and we type Switzerland at the bottom here, we type it so we can get some sort of idea how much worth is the Swiss passport. Let's try that again. So in regards to visa free, so I can travel to 91 countries um visa free so this is just a bit of information that um in regards to the, the ranking of the swiss passport so the swiss passport is one of the most sought after passports in the world it is ranked to have it is ranked fourth in the power power index giving visa free access to over 155 countries so with a swiss passport you are able to travel over out of this 155 countries visa free therefore it is hard to get a swiss passport obviously the government believes it's in the interest of the country to um, give well integrated foreign swiss citizenship so obviously having a swiss passport gives you the right to live and work and stay in switzerland um as well as move freely within the EU. So move freely from different European countries. So with a Swiss passport, you are able to migrate to various um, European countries and live there obviously with no issues or no hassle. So is the Swiss passport worth having? Definitely it is worth having. I feel like having a Swiss passport allows you to travel in and out of any European countries, even non-European countries without any sort of visas. And like I said, it ranks as the fourth most powerful passport in the world so it is quite a powerful passport to have and yes guys so another thing is having a swiss passport allows you to basically have additional dual nationality so if you are a swiss citizen you don't have to renounce your other nationality so for example with me i have a south african passport as well as a swiss passport nigerian passport as well as in the process of obtaining my british passport so basically all of these countries i mentioned i'm going to have separate videos for all of them so for example if i have all my passports here so this is a swiss one this is the south african one and this one is the nigerian one so all of these does not necessarily mean i have to um, renounce my citizenship however one thing about swiss citizen is keeping the swiss embassy up to date with either your current movement so when i came to the uk i had to let the swiss embassy know that i am currently staying in the uk and i had to register with the swiss embassy in london so that switzerland has some sort of idea about my whereabouts if i am going to be going around the world okay so the process of obtaining the Swiss passport is quite a hefty and quite a long process. It is not a quick process. Like I said, depending on your individual circumstances and also the area that you're staying in, you have to be able to write an exam, like I said, in regards to four languages. 
so yeah i've stayed in number of countries now obviously i've stayed in switzerland i've stayed in south africa as well as in the uk at this current point in time um nigerian passport obtaining it through my partner swiss passport by birth south african passport by birth as well as um a british passport obviously because i have stayed five years to obtain my indefinite and then get my passport once i've completed the life in the uk exam that guys brings me to the end of my video so this is everything that i'm going to be discussing in this video um if you've got any sort of question please don't forget to ask them down below i want to have a couple of videos to follow whichever one comes up first either this one or the south african one or the nigerian one or the british one whichever one so guys i hope you like it please don't forget to comment like and subscribe and i will hopefully hopefully see you guys in my next video ciao was zum sagen ich glaube wenn meine schwester der video tut ah look es tut einfach ein lachen weil sie seid immer ich als schicker nicht richtig reden so mich sind dann schon was sie seid über dem ganzen video